Welcome to Technogram, Reddington's podcast channel where we talk to industry leaders from the tech world and bring untold stories to the forefront. As we all know, cybersecurity is a very important element today, increasingly as we rely on uh, digital technologies. And in that regard, today on the show, we have Adarsh Abraham. He's the Senior Manager for the Security Practice at Intertech Systems. Adarsh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Janice. So let's dive right into it. How did you find yourself in the tech world? Oh, um, well, I have to take you down the you know memory lane a little bit. Yes, for sure. <laughs> so uh, from my bachelor's in engineering, it was uh, it was on electronics and communication. So it was uh, you know, more or less bound to be in the IT uh, environment, IT field. Uh, did some work in India and then moved to the UAE. Uh, I moved, uh, I, I found my place in uh, Seven Seas Computers mm. uh, as a pre-sales consultant and okay. that's how it all began back in 2007. And then I've grown my way within the, uh, uh, within the space, providing solutions to the customer, a lot of milestones achieved on the way. And then finally I'm here with Intertech for the last five years. Okay. Handling the practice. So it started off with Intertech handling network and security practice. And then we needed more focus on the cybersecurity space. And that's how uh, I have evolved into being the senior manager for the cybersecurity practice. Sounds wonderful. So you've got like hardcore channel experience. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I've been with seven with C's and Intertech now. Been with uh, System Integrator for all these years. So, yeah. So Intertech uh, is a very well-known SI. I think uh, you have had a presence in the region for over 30 years or so. And... Uh, 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 tell me if I'm wrong or right, but I think the perception for, of Intertech is that it's more of a cybersecurity company. Uh, is the perception right? How has Intertech evolved over the years and what are, is the company's top priorities today? I'm very glad that uh, you brought in this topic and that perception out there is that it is a cybersecurity vendor. Intertech uh, started off in 1991 under the able leadership of uh, Naresh Kothari, our managing director. Mm -hmm. uh, started off as, as more of an infrastructure company. Okay. Uh, over the years, we have grown uh, and created differentiator in the market for ourselves. We have evolved and created more deep capabilities in all the technology stack that we do. Uh, cybersecurity being on the forefront. We also have evolved a lot into the infrastructure space itself, added a lot of solutions, technology solutions in that space mm -hmm. uh, and in the digital space, app space as well. So that's the evolution path that we have taken. So today, uh, rather than just being known as a cybersecurity company or an infrastructure company or an apps company, we approach the customer as a holistic IT solutions company that they can approach to. So that's where our key uh, areas are. Our top priorities. Today is developing our own IP, so we have certain uh, industry-focused solutions, whether it be uh, utilities-based, you know, UI experience uh, uh, solutions, softwares. Uh, you talk about general insurance. You talk about uh, you know health insurance. You talk about uh, you know various other aspects where industry-focused solutions or softwares are being developed by us, and there are specific IPs that we hold in that area. Then on the horizontal uh, space, you talk about VDI, right? So mm -hmm. we have our own cloud uh, VDI uh, product, okay, uh, which is well accepted across the globe. We have customers from across the globe for that. And uh, yeah, other solutions as well. So we have, uh, let's say, cybersecurity again cuts across horizontally. Mm -hmm. Our other priority is also on the managed services front. We have seen a humongous response from the market for a managed services portfolio. How, um, how new is the managed uh, services portfolio? So from a managed services perspective, uh, it's, it's, it's been around 10 to 12 years that we are in that space. Uh, we have evolved over the years and then, you know, just giving some uh, bodies or, you know, resources to the customer to being able to manage the SLA and the expectations of the business and looking at the business outcomes that need to be achieved. Mm -hmm. uh, so. So that's the, today we also have something called as an iAutomate, which is an automation platform, which is homegrown uh, for the uh, you know, managed services. We have also evolved it into, uh, you know, being uh, able to, you know, sentiment analysis of the customers, understanding that, moving in that direction in terms of ensuring that the customer delight and satisfaction is brought to the table. And in this market, you're seeing a lot of uh, response. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's a growing area because 
today talent is the biggest uh, you know uh, uh, skilled resources is the biggest challenge for any customer mm -hmm. and that's what we provide uh, from a SLA perspective so they can just focus on their business and right. leave the management and operations to us okay wonderful um, others you come with a wealth of experience in cyber security so I'm sure you must be having a lot of stories with you as to uh, the things that we don't usually hear of right when we talk about a success story so I wanted to understand from your point of view I'm sure you have many but if you have to choose one particular deployment that was innovative that was uh, very different from the others and that's that you're very proud of what would that be right so uh, there are many as you rightly said a uh, lot of challenges put across a lot of uh, you know areas to work with customers and bring in that experience to the customer in the cybersecurity field um, couple I would say one of them is the uh, governance risk and compliance area where we have heavily invested in the last eight to nine months and we have seen great success coming in uh, that's that's one of the you know key uh, areas another area is in terms of uh, you know the uh, SD WAN platform now when we started this journey that's that's another example where probably Reddington and we collaborated to provide the customer and uh, and to address the customer's challenges. Uh, so what was the customer's core challenge? Right. So one is their increasing uh, cost in terms of their connectivity cost, uh, the reliance on the ISP and then the, the other thing is the availability, right? So they had minimum options or again because it boils down to the cost, the more the availability that you want from a branch to connect back to their data centers or the cloud and the whole management itself is a cumbersome process. So we embarked on that SD-WAN journey. We told them how it could benefit them. If you don't mind me asking the customers in which space? Uh, he's into the retail space. Okay. So you can imagine the right. number of you know distributed of sites that, and yes. branches and shops and all that they have. And it is spread across the region. Right. So that was a challenge in terms of uh, it's not just about the deployment. It's all also about the logistics and getting the equipment there, how it connects back. So we we wanted to go in for a zero touch kind of a deployment so okay. that the resource uh, utilization at the site is very minimal uh, and hence the success of the project as well. And Reddington has really helped us in getting the logistics uh, done for this and ensuring that various countries, the boxes arrive on time, uh, arrived at the destination, the things are done properly in terms of getting it hooked up to the cloud and yes. back to the customer's manager. Okay. So were you able to do it in such a way that they didn't have any downtime or face any, dis any Minimal downtime. So obviously the switch requires a downtime. But uh, yeah, obviously it is a minimal downtime. Uh, there is no time or configuration effort spent at the customer uh, site. It is just a plug and play for them. So they had to remove the previous device and just connect this device and they are up and live. Okay. So that's it's as simple as that. So post implementation, were they able to see some exciting advantages or benefits? Absolutely. There's a huge cost improvement in terms of getting rid of the expensive, uh, uh, you know, MPLS links that they had. Mm -hmm. They depended on the the cost effective ADSL links with the back end uh, backhaul for 4G, etc. So mm -hmm. backup for 4G, etc. So that's how they have improved their, you know, uh, cost. Okay. And I'm sure that's a big factor and I'm sure this customer has uh, come back to you for other other oh, needs as well. It's, it's, a, it's a regular customer for us. We address a lot of areas on security for them. We have worked again with Reddington in addressing uh, some of their PAM requirements as well. So, yeah, it's, it's an ongoing. See, it's, it's not a one-time solution sure. sale, right? So, yeah. with the customer, we embark on a journey mm -hmm. in terms of ensuring that their cybersecurity posture is much better than what it used to be before we started interacting with them. Right. So that's the whole goal. Okay. So how is Intertech different from all the other SIs out there? What makes you different and what what brings the, the end customer back to you again and again? So I believe it's the deep technical capabilities that we are invested on and mm -hmm. we have developed ourselves and the solutions that we put forth. Uh, in terms of going to the customer and discussing holistically in terms of their business mm -hmm. outcomes that they want, the issues that they face and mm -hmm. how we address them, right? We don't go in to solve a particular cybersecurity issue. We look at it from a holistic level. We look at it from the risk point of view. We look at how we can, you know, uh, able to reduce that risk and bring their residual risk to a minimum and ensure that they have a peaceful time mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> in the office. Yeah.
Yeah, that's running their cool. business. So channel partners uh, have the most important job, I would say, right? Because they own the customer relations. And but being one is not as easy as it sounds. Because I'm sh- like there are a lot of challenges from cash flows to uh, low margins. Uh, there are lots of layers of complexities when it comes to the channel business. So as a channel partner who's been in the industry, who's been in the market for several years together, uh, what would you say is one of the new challenges that you have come across in the last couple of years, especially with the emergence of new technologies? Absolutely. I mean, the, the, the challenge that uh, you're particularly asking is, as you said, emerging technologies. Right. right? Uh, adoption of it, how it would benefit the customer, whether it would benefit the customer. Now, we can have all the dialogues around AI and ML, but if it doesn't bring tangible value to the customer, then it's not something that that uh, goes well, right? So channel partners, uh, just just going a step back, we've always been challenged in terms of competition, in terms of you know the margins, in terms of what we can make. But I believe the long-term relationship with the customer is what uh, may you know uh, makes that uh, that gap better. And ensuring that they trust us, we trust them, and it's a it's a relationship. So then is where you make uh, better margins, maybe, or met, uh, you are able to serve them in multiple ways so that they understand the value and they pay for the value, right? Mm-hmm. And at Indotech, when you talk about emerging technologies, we always try to be the at the forefront of uh, technology. So if you talk about AI and ML, we have a task force, we have a separate division which has been invested into mm-hmm. to develop solutions around AI and ML. Obviously, from an IMS or managed services, uh, managed security services standpoint, we are always adopted. As I said earlier, the iAutomate is a platform for automation that we have internally. And a lot of our solution comes with AI and ML as well. So that evolution is, is a given. Right. So you have to constantly keep evolving and adapting. 100%. And that, that cannot be easier, right? No, not at all. So how do you invest as a company? How do you kind of keep that going? 100%. So... Uh, with the evolution in the you know cyberspace, the the, the hackers are also evolving. Right? Yes, so for when sure. When you talk about AI ML, the, the hacking tools are based on AI ML right now. So we have to be abreast on that, and we have we need to be in the forefront trying to evolve with them, or better than them, and making sure we have the right controls in place. And Indotech has always been uh, ready to invest into areas where the market is going, so that our customers can benefit in terms of what solutions we provide okay and um, you Intertech has been a long time partner with Reddington and I think over a decade if I'm not wrong two decades I would say two decades okay wow so ever since you know the <laughs> since we started business here so uh, when did you first hear of Reddington and can you elaborate a little bit about this association sure so Going back to your first part of the question in terms of how Reddington and Intertech collaborated, I think it's over two decades of uh, interaction. I think Reddington was formed around uh, 2000, year, the year 2000 in this region. Uh, yeah, we are, we are celebrating 25 years next year. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so we, we started, Intertech started off as an infrastructure company with Compaq and the relationship moved to HP. Mm-hmm. Same way that Reddington's Compaq relationship right. moved to HP. And since the time you guys are in the Middle East, I believe we have been interacting and there have been a lot of collaboration between Reddington and Intertech. Um, uh, the infrastructure business when it kick started uh, and even even earlier and definitely from 2005 onwards there has been constant interaction with Reddington so uh, that's 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 there where i came to know about reddington is you know probably the same year i landed out here in <laughs> yeah. 2007 2008 i believe we had uh, we had done a major project with hp proco okay uh, on the networking side mm-hmm. and that's where uh, you know uh, who, who was one of the first people that he spoke to from reddington sajeev pillai okay. one of the first yes. people that i spoke to he was also new in reddington at that point in time so we cracked the deal together we worked it out we worked out the logistics part of it and it was fun uh, it was in a different company but yeah. i was in a different company then but yeah, you, I think maybe seven C's. That's right? correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. Interesting. Um, so this is my last question, um, Adesh. How, as, as, a, as a SI yourself, and just as an overall perspective with your years of in, experience in the industry, how do you see the, the market and the space evolving for channel partners? What do you see your role in the future? See, uh, I, I have a different perspective to that. Obviously, uh, the improvement of you know capabilities, uh, deeper knowledge, etc. But no... Partner, no uh, uh, vendor can be, uh, 
you know, can address the entire requirements of the customer, right? As much as we strive to be, we will not be able to. I, I see the partners evolving as orchestrators. So uh, we would be the orchestrator there with Reddington, with other uh, distributors, partners, skills that are being brought in from different different organizations. And we being the orchestrator in front of the customer to deliver those uh, as, as a single uh, stop for that. I see channel partners evolving into being the orchestrators for the customer in terms of delivering the solutions end to it. So I think what you're saying is there will be a lot of synergies and uh, partnering or collaboration will be the way forward. 100%. I think it plays a major role in the times to come. Uh, uh, that, that ecosystem to be built for that orchestration is very important and it will involve a lot more partners coming together to give a better output to the customer. Okay, thanks Adarsh. Before I let you go, uh, if you can tell us, like, if you're not thinking about technology, what else is going on in your mind? Like, what else do you do when you're not working? Family, traveling, right. seeing places. <laughs> All the usual things. All the usual things, yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Adarsh, for spending your time with us here today. Thank you so and much. And hopefully we can have you back on the show again. I hope so. Thank Look you. Look forward to it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Janice.